Suppose we have a finite automaton with transition function delta. So remember that delta is going to be a function from the Cartesian product of the set of states and symbols into the set of states. But we'd like to apply our finite automaton to the elements of the star closure, the set of all possible symbols. To do that, we'll introduce a new function which we'll call delta star. So suppose we have a finite automaton. We'll define delta star to be the function from the Cartesian product of the set of states and strings into the set of states as follows. For any q in our set of states, delta star q nothing is just q. And then for any string and any individual symbol at any state, delta star of state yx is delta of delta star qy. X. Now that's a lot of notation, so let's take it apart. Informally, the first line here says that if you start at a state and there's no symbol to process, you don't go anywhere. And the second part of our definition means that we process the string one symbol at a time. In this case, the definition is actually more complicated than the process of using it. So let's take a look at that. So let's try to evaluate delta star of starting at d and processing this string. So our definition says that delta star of state string is the same as delta of delta star same state, but will clip off the last symbol and separate it. And we can do this again. Delta star of state string is delta of delta star state one shorter string and then the last symbol. And then lather, rinse, repeat. Now eventually we get down to delta star of state and single symbol. And remember that we can always concatenate with the empty string. So this delta star of state single symbol is really delta of delta star of state empty string followed by that single symbol. And that's useful because by definition we know that delta star of d empty string is just the state itself. And so now we can work our way backwards. Delta star of d zero well, that's delta of delta star d lambda, zero. But we know delta star d lambda is d. And delta of d, zero, if we're at d and get a zero, we go to state b. And that allows us to go back one step. Delta star of d, zero, one is delta of delta star d, zero, one. But delta star d0, we just found, is b. And delta of b1, if you're at state b and get 1, you go to c. Again, delta star of d011 is delta of delta star d01, 1. And delta star d01 is c. And delta of C1. If you're at C and receive a 1, you go to E. And working our way back to the top, we find informally, we're starting in state D and we're going through our symbols one by one. So 0 takes us to B, 1 takes us to C, 1 takes us to E and so on, eventually arriving us at C. And so if we're just interested in knowing what delta star does, we can just evaluate. So for example, delta star of C this thing. So starting at C, 0 takes us to E. 1 takes us to B. 1 takes us to C. 1 takes us to E, 0 takes us to A, 0 takes us to A, and then 1 takes us to A. 
And the way you can think about this delta star function is it's really if you start at a particular state and then follow the directions from that state, where do you end up? And notice that sometimes we end in an accepting state and other times we don't. This allows us to define let m be a finite automaton with transition function delta. A string is accepted by m if delta star of that string is one of the accepting states. Otherwise, it's rejected. Intuitively, if we start at our initial state and then run through the string x, if we end at an accepting state, then the string is accepted. Otherwise, it's rejected. And the language accepted by our finite automaton is the subset of strings that are accepted by the automaton. So let's take the finite automaton shown and let's figure out the language that's accepted. So a useful thing to remember, build on a concrete foundation. Let's see how we can get to the accepted state. So note that A is the only accepting state, so we'll begin by finding some path to A. So our initial state is D, and we can get to A by going to E and then on to A. So what are the directions that get us there? If we're at D, the direction 1 will take us to E. And if we're at E, the direction 0 will take us to A. But wait! There's more. Notice there's a loop at A. So we can also, once we're at A, loop back to A and still be in an accepting state. And what's going to take us back to A is either 0 or 1, and we could go through the loop as many times as we want. And so putting these things together, our finite automaton accepts the string, Or let's take a more involved example. So notice there are two accepting states, A and E, and so one path to an accepting state is from the initial state, D, to the accepting state, E, and we can get there if we start at D and get instruction 1. Now, since A is also accepting, we could continue onwards from E. So we could go D to E to A, and we go from E to A if we saw instruction 1, but there's a loop, so we can loop around as many times as we want to, and so we have another string that's part of the language. But wait, there's still more. Alternatively, we could move from E, so we could go D to E to B to A, and the directions we'd need to take this path would be And we can include a loop at B and also at A, corresponding to another string that's part of our language. And so our language consists of three components.